Greetings. This video is for June the 21st, the third Sunday after Pentecost and lectionary 12. Mentioned a little bit about those numbers being the ordinal numbers to designate each of these Sundays after Pentecost in the video last week. This week, however, we continue reading from the mission discourse of Jesus in the gospel according to Matthew. Uh, the discourse that most people know of in Matthew is the Sermon on the Mount. It's said that even Gandhi, though he wasn't a Christian, read and meditated on Jesus' Sermon on the Mount every day. We, however, through these green growing Sundays, are reading through the missionary discourse beginning at the end of chapter 9, mostly in chapter 10 of the Gospel according to Matthew. And last week we heard about the calling of the 12 apostles and their being authorized in Jesus' name to go forth and to preach the presence of the kingdom. This week we're going to hear a little bit more about that mission. And you'll notice over my shoulder the window in our church. Now that seven branch lampstand has often been used as an image of the fellowship of the church. In fact, in the book of Revelation, we hear about a similar kind of lampstand with seven branches or seven lampstands that are emblematic of the entirety of the church. Each branch or flame representing a congregation, and all of them being connected through their fellowship in Christ Jesus. Indeed, that is the goal. We're going to hear more about that in the sermon for this week. There's a way in which you also can participate in the mission of the church and in this fellowship. Part of the way you are doing that is by watching these videos, and we're very grateful for that. If you would let us know in the comments uh, where you're watching from, we would be grateful for that. Also, we have a couple of events coming up that pertain to this fellowship of the church. The fellowship is disclosed through the teaching and preaching ministry of the church, the fellowship we have with each other through Jesus Christ. And we have two dates for Vacation Bible School that are coming up. There are lots of options to participate in that Bible School. You need not be present, but we would love to have you on the two dates that we will be in person. You can find more information about all of that on our website as well as through this Facebook feed. Hope you all are blessed by this video and our ongoing ministry of Making Christ Known.
A reading from Jeremiah. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all day long. Everyone mocks me, for whenever I speak, I must cry out, I must shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say, I will not mention his or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering. Terror is all around. Denounce him. Let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed, and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble, and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. And a reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, Proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for one penny? Yet, not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father, and even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace on earth. I have come not to bring peace, but a sword. 
For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Therefore, those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Here ends the reading. Well, that was quite the Father's Day greeting from Jesus. I have come to set a man against his father, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. It's very unlikely that Jesus was actually desiring strife within families. Much more likely is that he was contrasting two sets of values among two different kinds of households in the passage we just heard. One kind of household is characterized by insecurity. For example, one can only be part of that family if one is exactly the same as everybody else in the family. There's no room for differences. Similarly, those kinds of households that are characterized by insecurity might also have some degree of inconsistency, with members waffling, or there being some degree of chaos, because all of the members are constantly seeking affirmation or approval from outside themselves. All of this is by way of contrast with families or households having a more profound bond that results in confidence as opposed to insecurity. While affirmation is nice, members of these kinds of households don't crave it, nor do they really need it, because they already have all of the confirmation they will ever need. They have it in a reliable and unshakable bond that is the love existing within their household. Each member knows clearly who she or he is, and as a result, each of the members of this contrasting household has the ability to bear difference among the members. They're even able to bear scorn and rebuke from others without being reactive or trying to retaliate. In theory, the difference between these two kinds of households may seem absolute. In reality, most of us and our households feel some degree of tension, ourselves being drawn between these two extremes. Jesus, in drawing attention to these kinds of contrasts, was setting real realistic expectations for his disciples. Even today, there's a stereotype that mature Christian disciples never have any troubles or problems. They never have doubts. They never become ruffled or anxious. Jesus, with the words we've heard today, was preparing his disciples, members of his own household, for what they would actually experience as they began to engage his mission in the world. We, as members of that same household of faith called the Church, also experience similar things today as we engage the mission of Christ Jesus in the world. And so those words of Jesus are poignant. 
It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and for the slave to be like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? Here's another example of these kinds of tensions in the readings today, particularly in that reading from Jeremiah. There, we heard about the obligation that was upon the prophet Jeremiah to speak the word of the Lord. It was something like a burning fire within him, a compulsion, something he had to do. And yet, the authorities in his time didn't like the implications of the word Jeremiah proclaimed. As a result, the priest Pashur had Jeremiah locked up and placed in the stocks as a punishment. When he was released from the stocks, Jeremiah said that that priest should be named Magor Misabib, which is translated as terror is all around. Jeremiah felt stuck and pulled between his loyalty to God his obligation to proclaim that word of the Lord, and his understandable worldly desire to be spared from the priest, from Magor Sabim, terror is all around. As Jesus has pointed out, however, for as long as we Christians are in the world, we will experience this kind of internal tug of war. But in Christ, there is the promise of an end to all of this angst. In fact, that end relates to the mission of Christ. That mission is to unveil things. It is part of that mission to reveal the thing that enables people to endure differences, or even hardships, or even being maligned, without retaliating against those who misunderstand and cause the hardship. Jesus said, have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be un." covered, and nothing secret that will not become known. Another way of translating that word for uncovered would be apocalypse. And although these things are no joking matter, I recently heard a joke that provides the proper perspective with regard to these matters. The joke goes like this. So what if I don't know the meaning of the word apocalypse? It's not the end of the world. Well, Christians actually believe it is the end of the world. We believe that Christ, at the end, will be revealed in visible glory. And it is the certainty of that unveiling, of the making known of the things that may be a bit confusing now, that enables us to bear any kind of hardship we have to endure as a result of our kinship and our confession of Christ Jesus and our engaging his mission. Even more than any hardships born as a result of being members of the household of Jesus, these hardships actually serve as confirmation. They are proof ahead of time for those who believe of that which will be revealed or unveiled or made clear at the end. It is indeed enough for us to be like Jesus in this way, in bearing hardships as a result of our engaging his mission, because these hardships assure us of Christ's love. They assure us that even though he could have spared himself any kind of hardship 
in this world, out of love for us and for all of humanity, he chose to endure it. It is the knowledge of that love that makes all the difference in the world. It is the knowledge of that love we possess already and which will be revealed to all in the end that is part of our mission. So that no one goes without knowing that love. It is that love that has brought us, even now by faith, into the household that is fellowship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. O oh God, our Defender, storms rage about us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear. And preserve us all from unbelief through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, sanctify our homes with your presence and joy. Keep our children in the covenant of their baptism, and enable their parents to rear them in a life of faith and devotion. By the spirit of affection and service, Unite the members of all families, that they may show forth your praise in our land and in all the world. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O 
Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.